Um, so I'm going to give you updates from the Elixir team. I'm, we're really glad to be uh, here doing this. So I was trying to uh, do this, same as the OTP team. Um, so Elixir is uh, starting to be a grown-up language right now. Uh, it's almost three years old. Uh, it's very stable. Uh, so we released version 1.0 uh, almost three years ago. Uh, we didn't have any breaking changes since. Um, right now, we, have, we are at version 1.4. Um, so we have uh, the number of contributors increased a lot. We have a very large community. Um, we have a lot of conferences, books going on around Elixir. Uh, there's a lot of lots of production Elixir going on. Um, many companies adopted it, uh, and we're really happy, generally happy with with the direction uh, Elixir is going. Um, so right now we're at version 1.4, um, and the plan is to do releases. Uh, of minor versions every six months. Um, and the next version will be version 1.5, which will be, will be out as soon as OTP 20 is out. Uh, and then we'll do six months uh, releases, basically. Um, so first thing I want to talk about is the, uh, <laughs> is the um, improvement in uh, Elixir 1.5, so the next version. Um, so the first thing uh, is UTF-8 atoms. Um, as Kenneth said yesterday, we can do this in OTP 20. He said, but why? And I said, what? Of course, UTF-8 atoms. Uh, so we actually, we actually, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's it's spreading, yes. <laughs> uh, so we actually uh, contributed this back to OTP. So we were re really happy that we were able to improve the whole ecosystem. Uh, we're really thankful to the OTP team for all the help and the guidance in implementing this. Uh, what this means for Elixir. Uh, means that now you can do uh, you can write um, test uh, cases where the title is uh, UTF-8. Uh, you can write UTF-8 at atoms, uh, and if you use a subset of UTF-8, they can be without quotes as well. Uh, sadly, emojis need, need quotes for now, um, and you can use uh, UTF-8 variables as well um, with a subset of, of UTF-8 again. Um, and if you don't think this is important, you should go read this very, very long um, Erlang mailing list uh, thread, which like, has a lot of talk about why this is important. Um, next improvement we're really happy to have in 1.5 is uh, something called exception blame. Uh, so exception blame is a way of enriching exceptions, uh, with, so errors, uh, with debug information. Um, and so thanks to OTP20, we can ra now write um, the bug, the bug information uh, into BIM files. Uh, and what we're writing basically Elixir AST uh, into the BIM files. And what this means, it means that we can uh, retrieve that AST uh, later. Uh, and we can uh, provide the user with some uh, useful debug information. Uh, and for now, exception blame only is only able to enrich function clause errors. Uh, and the way it enriches function clause errors is by uh, basically saying what uh, in every in each clause of the function what failed um, to match basically so when you get a function clause error we will say these are the arguments that you gave to the function um, and these are the clauses that the function have and each and no clo clause matched uh, and each clause didn't match because of exactly this um, so basically we will have a very clear way to see why uh, no clause matched, basically. Um, and we have this in the Elixir shell. We have this in the Elixir testing framework, uh, in the Elixir compiler. Um, and we were able to do this uh, in plug as well, which is like a web um, framework, uh, very lightweight framework for Elixir. Uh, so we were able to have the same thing, uh, the same blame for, for function clauses um, in the web, in the debugger, uh, plug debugger uh, for the web, basically. Um, another thing uh, we worked on, and it, which is now um, basically done, is GenStage and Flow. Um, so GenStage is a way uh, library uh, that make, makes you able to create components that produce and consume events, um, and where events flow in a demand-driven way from component to component with uh, back pressure. Um, and uh, then Flow is a way to do parallel computations on collections, uh, and it's built on top of GenStage, so it uses GenStage and it uses stages uh, to do perform parallel computation on collections. Um, and we actually 
want to include this in 1.5, so the original plan was to include this, uh, both of these in Elixir, um, but we ended up uh, leaving them in their own repositories because it worked really well with uh, using them just as dependencies. The release cycle is, is a bit faster and um, I mean, they work really well as dependencies. And if you want to read more about GenStage, uh, there's a, Jose wrote a really good blog post um, and you can read all the like, announcement and all the features and, and uh, additional resources. And then we're going to have many, many small improvements. So if you go to the uh, Elixir rep repo uh, on GitHub and look at the changelog, it's going to list all the um, improvements and bug fixes for the version 1.5. So this is version 1.5. Uh, what's going to happen in the future, so the, the um, short uh, term plan for the future, um, what we're going to do, we want to do is we want to deprecate tuple calls. Uh, so probably most of you know, but in Erlang you can uh, call tuples as if we're, they were modules. Um, and this basically turns out into a, like a proper function call. Um, and it's, uh, we think it's pretty confusing for users and it's pretty, pretty surprising behavior it leads to uh, convolute code, um, so we want to remove this, deprecate this in Elixir, um, and Jose told me that someone from the OTP team may have mentioned that this will speed up compiler, the compiler uh, for OTP, but uh, I mean, citation needed, so if you have the citation, give it to me. Uh, so the, and the next thing we want to do short term is dynamic supervisor. So basically in Erlang you have uh, supervision strategies and one of them is simple one for one, but simple one for one is a very like it's very different from all the other supervision strategies and the whole API um, for when you use the simple one for one the whole API for supervisor when you use the simple one for one is different than when you use other strategies. So this has, so we have a pretty confusing and mi mixed API because we're trying to to do everything with the same API but with different strategies. Uh, the documentation is really confusing to read because every function uh, in supervisor we basically say if the strategy is not simple one for one, then this happens. If the strategy is simple one for one, then this happens. Uh, so we think uh, it's better to have like a separate uh, supervisor called dynamic supervisor that will um, just b basically be simple one for one and we'll just have one strategy which is one for one uh, and it will replace the simple one for one strategy basically. Um, so this is the short term, -term uh, improvements. We're doing a lot of research as well right now. Um, so we have a bunch of research projects going on. Uh, first one is uh, we're, we're looking into um, basically doing data streams and doing property testing through on, on top of data streams. Uh, so the progress is pretty good on this. Uh, so the idea is to have a very lightweight uh, quick check style a la Haskell's quick check, um, quick check style testing. Uh, capabilities basically, and we want to build this into a Elixir's um, testing framework. Um, and it will only work with data generators. Uh, it will not uh, do state machine stuff, uh, for example, like um, Erlang's Quick Check. Uh, but we hope it's going to be, first of all, very useful for like data heavy testing, and also um, that it's going to be a gateway to property testing for many users that will discover property testing th through this. Um, and be able to use it uh, and be able to get to know property testing. Um, so in the, in the examples you can see, we're basically uh, asserting a property, we're generating strings uh, from two data streams, which are data.string. Uh, so we generate two strings and we assert, test the function, starts string dot starts with, uh, by, uh, with the data generated by the, by the um, testing, uh, property testing framework basically. Um, so this is the first research project. Um, then we got two Google Summer of Code projects uh, accepted into for, through Beam community, um, and we're working on them. We just started working on them. So the first one is XFormat, which will be a code formatter for Elixir, uh, so that it will take a string of Elixir code and format it uh, according to the Elixir style guide. Um, to another a string of Elixir code. Uh, and we hope this will uh, make contributing to Elixir easier, starting out with Elixir easier, because you don't have to think about stuff like uh, style. Uh, and it will definitely save time reviewing code. Uh, so it, I think it's going to be a great improvement. Um, then we're the other project where we got accepted is uh, language server protocol. So language server protocol 
is a Microsoft uh, standard um, for basically intercommunication between editors, uh, text editors, and programming languages. So that if you have a standard, you don't have to implement custom support for each editor for each language, uh, but you can just implement this protocol and then uh, editor, an editor that implements this protocol will be able to um, work very well with Elixir if once Elixir uh, has something like this as well. Uh, and then we have uh, last research project. Uh, we have a master th student working on a HTTP client uh, for his master th thesis. Uh, so this is gonna be a, um, like the idea is to have a functional flexible HTTP client that is um, very thin abstraction over basically, you can think of it as a very thin abstraction over Gen TCP. Uh, and this, uh, we hope, is going to be uh, pleasant to use. It's going to be uh, very low level, so you can build on top of it. Uh, and we have uh, this student working on it. Um, if you want to get involved on any of this stuff, uh, you can go to the Elixir repo. Um, there's issues to contribute to. Um, uh, you can go to elixirlang.org website. Uh, so we're very excited for the direction this is going, and that was all. Thank you for that whirlwind introduction to what's happening in Elixir land and uh, me being a part of it. Uh, I still was a couple of tidbits and news that I find most in interesting. We have a, a time for a few more few questions. I saw the um, info about property-based testing, and I wonder why you want to introduce a new property-based testing framework instead of leveraging Trick, Proper, or EQC Mini. So we want this in Elixir. This particular, like, so this will be a very small, uh, just data property testing, basically. Uh, and we want this in the, the Elixir. We probably want this in Elixir Core. That's why we're not leveraging. We're not basing it off any existing. Uh, thing we want to test Elixir's standard library with it, uh, so we don't dog feed it to Elixir, uh, and we want it to be part of, like, integral part of the Elixir X unit, which Elixir's, which is Elixir's testing framework. Uh, but I mean, this is like it's pretty small. It's a pretty small uh, piece of code. It's not like a huge, huge work. So uh, I think it's it's fine to have just this in the Elixir standard library, and then. If you need anything more, you you're going to have to go to Quick Check or Trick or whatever other property testing library because we want to support stuff like state machines. Uh, but we hope this is going to be like a gateway to get to that. Any more questions? Okay, then. Thank you very much. <laughs>